Number one gives us a graph that represents Andre's distance as um, away from his bike as he walks in the park. Decide whether the statements are true or false. So the first statement says that the graph has multiple horizontal intercepts. So let's um, draw this line for our horizontal axis. So here's our horizontal axis. Horizontal intercepts are when the graph touches that um, axis. So we've got a horizontal intercept here and here, which makes sense because, um, so this is true, and that makes sense because he would have to have had his bike and then, so been at his bike here and then walked away from it, walked around the park and then came back to his bike. So a distance of zero would mean he's at his bike or touching his bike. Um, so yes, that's true that there are hor um, multiple horizontal intercepts. A horizontal intercept of the graph represents a time when Andre is with his bike. And that is true because he's zero um, feet away from his bike, meaning he's touching his bike or with his bike. A minimum of the graph is 17 one. Um, this is not a minimum because the minimum would actually be like when he's touching his bike. So this isn't a minimum because there are other values lower than this where he is closer to his bike than one foot away from it. The graph has two maximums. That can't be true because um, you can't have two different points that are the highest. I mean, I guess you could if they're the same height. But this one here is at about eight, and this one here is higher than eight. So this one is the maximum. This one is lower than it. So it does not have two maximums. At about 21 seconds after he left his bike, he was the furthest away from it at 8.3 feet. So at, um, let me make this a little bit skinnier. So at 21 seconds, he was at his furthest distance from the bike, which they're saying is about 8.3 feet. And so if we push this over to here, we do see that that would make sense. So this is the highest point on the graph, and it's when he's about 8.3 um, feet away from his bike. So this would be true. Number two, the graph represents the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit as a function of time. Tell the story of the temperature throughout the day. Identify the maximum and minimum of this um, function and where the function is increasing and decreasing. So this is um, 12 p.m., which would be noon. So this is sometime in the morning. So it kind of shows um, in the morning the temperatures were increasing or the temperature was increasing pretty quickly um, until about noon when the, the temp was still increasing but um, at a slower rate. since we can see that the slope kind of um, flattens out. And um, it reaches its highest temperature at 3 p.m. So it's increasing until its highest temp at 3 p.m. Then in the afternoon, or then for the rest of the day, the temps um, decrease and at about 7 p.m. they start um, to decrease faster. Maybe because maybe that's sunset.
Um, so increasing in the morning pretty quickly until noon, and then it kind of, it still increases um, just at a slower rate until the max temp happens at 3 p.m. Then it decreases the rest of the afternoon um, and then starts decreasing more quickly in the evening from 7 to 9. Maybe that's because the sunset and um, the minimum temp happens kind of at the beginning and the end of the day, right? So these look to be about the same temp at whatever time it was in the morning that we started recording and noon. So the minimum happens at the start and end of the day. So the minimum temp happens at the start and the end of the day. Number three, match each um, feature of the situation with a corresponding statement in the function notation. So if we take a look here and we kind of write this function notation, so they're calling it H. So let me just write out in general what this is going to be. So H of the input equals the output. Remember your input is this horizontal axis. So this one's going to be H of the time is going to kick back or give us back the height. So when we're looking at this, this first one is um, zero seconds, right? So zero seconds is going to give us a height of seven. It's going to give us seven feet, right? And zero seconds is called our starting time. So that goes with D. So number one is with D. Then, and you can see this on the graph at zero. So here's zero. So zero is at seven. This next one um, is H of 1.5. So at one and a half seconds, here's where we're at, um, which is appears to be the minimum, so that's B. So number two is the minimum height. Number three gives us H of four. So four seconds is here. If we go all the way up to where that touches the graph, we see that that's the very top point or the maximum point. So that's our maximum height. And then this next one says that H of T equals six. So the output equals six. So if we go in here, that's going to be our height. So our height is six, which is right here. And that's happening between the seconds of seven and eight seconds, which is what they say here. So the height is six between seven and eight seconds. That would be when the height is staying the same. So the height isn't changing there. So that's letter C for number four. Number four, here are the equations that define three functions. F of X equals 4X minus 5. G of X equals 4 times the quantity X minus 5. And H of X equals X divided by 4 minus 5. So which function has the largest value? So we're going to plug 100 into each of these. So for this um, first one, f of x, we're going to be doing 4 times 100, which is 400, minus 5 gives us um, 395. g of x is going to be 4 times 100 minus 5, which is 95. And when we do 4 times 95, we get 380. Then H of X, we're going to do 100 divided by 4, which is 25 minus 5, which is going to give us 20. So the largest one would be F of 100. Which function has the largest value for negative 100 when we plug it in? So when we plug negative 100 in here, that's going to be negative 400 minus 5, which is negative 405. In G, we're going to do 4 times negative 100 minus 5 is negative 105. So then this is going to be negative 405. 
Then for h of x, we're going to do negative 100 divided by 4, which is negative 25, minus 5, which gives us negative 30. And then that's the largest number because that's the one that's closest to 0. So if we think about these on a number line, just to make sure we understand that, here's 0. Negative 405 is down here for both of those. And then negative 30 is here, much closer to 0. So negative 30 is the largest number there. And not necessarily because it's closer to 0, but it's further to the right on the number line. So if we had had a number, obviously, over here, it would have been bigger than negative 30. But negative 30 is the largest there, so h of negative 100 is the largest. Then in this last one, we'll plug in 1 over 100, which as a decimal is 0 0.01. So if we do 4 times 0 0.01 minus 5, so we get 0 0.04 minus 5, which is negative 4.96. Then we'll plug in to g of x, so we'll do 4 times um, 0 0.01 minus 5, and 0 0.01 minus 5 gives us um, negative 4.99. And then we want to multiply that by 4, which is negative 19.96. Then we'll plug in to h of x. So we'll have 0 0.01 divided by 4 minus 5. So 0 0.01 divided by 4 is um, 0 0.0025. And then we'll subtract 5 off of that and we get negative 4.9975. So which of these is the largest number? And that's going to be um, f of negative, f of 1 over 100. So negative 4.96 is the largest of those. Again, if I put that on the number line here, so here's 0, um, here's negative 5, so negative 19.96 is somewhere down here by negative 20, right? And then we have um, negative 4.96, which is like here. And then negative 4.9975 is closer to negative 5. So we can see again that this one is furthest to the right on the number line. So that one is the largest number. Number five, function f is defined by this equation. What is f of two? So for f of two, it means that we're going to plug this two in for x. So instead of x, we'll put a two. So two squared and two squared is four. For f of three, we'll plug in a three in place of x. So three squared, which is nine. And then it says explain why f of 2 plus f of 3 does not equal f of 5. So if we look at finding f of 5, f of 5 would be 5 squared, which is 25. So if we just kind of plug in here, so it said f of 2 plus f of 3 does not equal f of 5. And what was f of 2? So f of 2 is actually 4. And then f of 3 is 9. And then f of 5 is 25. And then we can see that 4 plus 9 does not equal 25. Because 4 plus 9 is 13, which is not the same thing as 25. So f of 2 plus f of 3 does not equal f of 5. Number six, Priya bought plants for a science experiment. When she brought them home, the first plant was five centimeters tall and the second plant was four centimeters tall. 
Since then, the first plant has grown 0.5 centimeters a week, and the second plant has grown 0.75 centimeters a week. So I'm just going to draw a little picture of these two plants. So these are my pots that the plants are in. So this first one, right? So here's our first plant and here's our second plant. So this um, first plant, let me see if I can. Okay. So this first plant um, that she had was five centimeters tall. And then it's growing 0 0.05 per week. Then this second plant that she had started at four centimeters tall and it's growing at 0.75 per week. So then I can just kind of see what I have for each plant, right? So it says which plant is taller at the end of two weeks. So for the first plant, we have five centimeters for its initial height, and then it had two weeks worth of growth. So it grew 0.5 the first week and 0.5 the second week. So five plus 0.5 plus 0.5 means that this one is six centimeters tall. Then the second plant started at four centimeters and then grew 0.75 in the first week and 0.75 in the second week. So if you add all of those together, you get 5.5 centimeters. So then we can see um, that the first plant is taller at the end of two weeks. So it started taller and it's still taller, right? So the first plant here. Then it says which plant is taller at the end of 10 weeks. So the first plant, we have the initial five centimeters. Okay, I don't wanna write this out this many times. So this was two weeks. So now I'm going to have 10 of these. So that's multiplication when we do repeat addition. So we want 10 weeks at 0.5 growth, right? So 10 weeks of growth or 10.5s is going to be 5. So then 5 plus 5 gives us 10 centimeters for the height of the first plant at the end of 10 weeks. Then the second plant started at 4 centimeters and for 10 weeks is growing 0.75 per 10 weeks, right? So 10 weeks of growth is 10 times 0.75, which is 7.5. So add the initial height with the growth, and we get 11.5 centimeters. So the second plant is taller at the end of two weeks, or sorry, at the end of 10 weeks. Part C, Priya represents this situation with an equation, with, with these two equations where W represents the end of week W. What does the solution to this, which is W equals four, mean? So she set them equal to each other and these represent the heights. So this represents the week where the plants are the same height in this case four, where the plants are the same height. And then in D it said, what does the solution to five plus 0.5 W is greater than four plus 0.75 W? So this one represents the first plant, right? Five centimeters of initial height and 5.5 growth per week. So this is where the first plant is taller than the second plant. Or you could say where the first plant's height is greater than the second plant's height if you wanted to.